Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. On this week's Throwdown, we have Mashed Potatoes Mia and Buttery Bread Brandy demoing the workout. We've got rowing, wall balls, box jump overs, clean and jerks, bar muscle ups, and squat snatches. 1 p.m. <laughs> 1 p.m. <laughs> we can't gobble and say that at the same time, man. Join our entire community to practice the skill of competing. Use the next two days to plan a strategy, grab some friends, and throw down on Saturday. See where you stack up each week on our Throwdown leaderboard. It's free to sign up. Go to trainingthinktank.com slash throwdown. This week's Throwdown is a Thanksgiving special. 26-minute AMRAP of 52 cal row for male, male, female teams. If it's female, female, 42 calories. 52 wall balls, 52 box jump overs, 26 cleaning jerks, 26 bar muscle ups, and 26 squat snatches. We have other variations if you have a co-ed team or you're doing this by yourself, so check it out in the description down below. For movement standards, nothing to note. Make sure that you know that you can change or move. Golly, what the? You can change and move and do anything you, you can want, do anything whenever you want. You want. Eat, eat some Where buttery are you bread. going with that? <laughs> I don't know, Mia. <laughs> this week's demo athletes are two lovely ladies that have been part of TTT for a while, Mia and Brandy. I'd say their strengths in this workout are the cyclical element of the rowing, the wall balls, and the box jump overs, whereas bar muscle ups is the part of the workout that they're trying to strategize around. That gives you some context for who they are as athletes in this workout. Let's go see our strategy. So we're gonna break it up a lot to start, break up the rower um, and try to row pretty quickly so we can get out of there fast. Um, wall balls, we're just gonna break them a lot and transition in and out without letting the ball hit the ground, hopefully. And take it away, Brandy. Box jumps, we're gonna split pretty equally, but that's <laughs> when <laughs> I will, or Mia will take an extra set at the end so that I can start on clean and jerks and take a few more reps of the clean and jerks so that she can open with a big set of bar muscle ups. And then it's gonna kinda go off field from there. We'll see how deep we can get into that second round. Yeah. How many licks to the center of a Tootsie Pop? 10. That's it? No. <laughs> if you like to bite through. <laughs> Aggressive licking by Brandy McGoldrick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the little owl says three, though, right? It does yeah. two licks and bites it. So before we start, just like to highlight that we thought we were going to get into the second round, and You're gonna you'll blow see it. how, You're how gonna far blow. we'll see how far we get and how much pain we're in. Yeah, we this was fun point. watching because you guys were like red line after round one, but I you know. kept the same splits all the way through. What was your pace right here on the rower? I started at like 14. 1300, and I think Brandy was about the same. We were probably average 13s in the first round. So you guys were pretty systematic about the way you wanted to do this. You had a plan for how many cows, how many mm -hmm. box jumps, so on and so forth. Well, Did you stick to that? what's funny is we had this plan that we calculated, and on the first row, Brandy goes, wait, this isn't the right math. So it was all <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I'd like to point out as well that Brandy's uh, profession prior to this was being an accountant. <laughs> I will hire her. <laughs> but four transitions, or each person rowing twice here, and then I believe each person wall balled twice. The, the wall ball, you don't lose any time. You can like uh, break that up as much as you want if you don't let the ball hit the ground. But we figured on the row the, that rowing harder and just transitioning more would work out better. Yeah, this is actually, a, a the rowing machine for teams is actually a different style of sport, in yeah. my opinion. It is so much more about sprint recovery and transitioning and getting into it. Whereas if it were just a straight 42 calorie row, the pace is so much different. You don't really get into that more like exponential calorie accumulation by going faster. Yeah, the key is being able to transition quickly. So teams that are going to transition, let's say four to six times, you have, well, hey, Travis. <laughs> he did that, yeah. like he was gonna miss the camera somehow. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be able to get in and like start pulling right away, otherwise you can lose anywhere from five to seven seconds every single transition, which is a lot over the course of, you know, 40 cows or 50 cows for the guys. Yeah, and this is a long workout. I definitely didn't give respect to how long this workout was because since it was you go, I go, for some reason I was like, oh, it'll go by fast. Yeah. <laughs> like most team workouts nowadays, you're synchroing or yeah. moving the worms, so you're always working. So I was like, yeah, I'm only working for half the amount of time. No big I've deal. I've <laughs> always said that workouts like this, you go, I go, are the most painful because oh, you have man. to go so hard. I this also part wasn't bad. The, the wall ball. The yeah. row, wall ball, box jump overs, you're, I mean, you get a good amount of rest in yeah. these, but when you get to the bar muscle ups and barbell, 
it, you're you're going you're kind of, you're actually resting less than you would if you're just taking a break yeah. by yourself. Yeah. I think also wall balls for females that are as tall as the males in the sport to a nine foot yeah, ten. I mean, they're they're not doing like, the ball's barely <laughs> coming out. <laughs> Mia is just touching watching. the target. <laughs> yeah. She's doing thrusters with a wall ball. <laughs> but she's meeting the standard and she's doing the work. Yep. So good job. I, like, yeah. I was very grateful for wall balls in the sport. <laughs> now. Not in a, at this point everything was okay, but by the next round. They were nice. I really like how you guys are transitioning on the wall ball. Kyle and I talked about it when we did the workout, and it didn't. We <laughs> <laughs> didn't talk to Yeah, yeah. They're yeah, much more the, skilled. The first rep is awkward, but just like accept it to be accept that it's going to be awkward and adjust from there. Yeah, it's not a big deal. I think it's more important to get your feet set where you need to have them, and realize that the catch of that first rep is just mm -hmm. awkward, and then you set it into the rhythm that you need. So really good job. So the row was 203 for 42 cows, which is super solid. And then the wall ball was 130 for 52 reps, which is super That's fast. That's good speed, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then they're moving here on the box jumps as well. This is actually a separator. Like for, so I said Kyle, Nia's Kyle, and myself, we did the workout, and we just did like step they overs scaled because, the workout. because <laughs> neither of us can jump. We have old man knees. And it was so much slower than what they were doing. So we had to make up time elsewhere. But if you can bound like this, you can definitely make up some time. I have been thinking a lot about knees tracking over the toes recently because it's a theme of trying to help people with knee stuff. And if you watch how Brandy rebounds over versus how Mia rebounds over, Mia's knees stay a little bit more vertical and her hips are back and she jumps higher, whereas Brandy's knees track way forward of her toes and she stays lower and then kind of bunny hops off. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a better or a worse strategy to doing it. I just generally think of it as having <clears throat> one that you can default to, but having the ability to do multiple different things just for athletic development's sake. But it's just something to notice as as you're watching them. Yeah, well, if you watch high-level athletes in any sport, their knees are tracking over, and uh, they are able to really forcefully internally rotate their femurs too in any position to cut or jump. So I think that's something that we always are afraid of in the sport, because we always hear like, knees need to be outside of the feet or yeah. like right on the ankles. But that's not necessarily the case, and that's not what we've seen in other sports. So, jerk. so the strategy here was, Brandy was gonna take more reps, so she opened with six, and then I do six. Um, and then she's gonna end, and I'm opening with a big set of bar muscle ups because we thought this was the only set of bar muscle ups <laughs> yeah. we were gonna do. We're gonna do 26. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the uh, I would say that this the touch and go cleaning jerk and bar muscle up, and then squat snatch. That part was so gross. Yeah, yeah I think it those was, are just yeah. it's just exponentially more work per rep, especially when you have to do touch and go, touch and go barbells or repeat gymnastics, it just requires so much bracing, it's harder to breathe. So I think really the, the big separator from capacity standpoint would be if you could get through this, this later half of the round and still be able to push the pace when you get back to those you know, lower tension movements, those first three movements that are just higher cycle rate. I actually think that's a good way to think about it. Know that you're gonna be in more pain during this part of the workout, but that even though the row is hard, you're gonna get a longer break, like Mia said, mm -hmm. because you know, let's say if you're splitting it up, one's doing 11, then you do 11, or however you're breaking it up, that's you know, 35 or 40 second break, whereas you're only getting three or four seconds between those yeah. doubles on the clean and jerks and the squat snatches. So how many did you do here, Mia? I did seven. I thought about my. I wanted to do ten, but then I looked at the clock and we were six minutes in, and I. Was you like, realized, uh, yeah, you're gonna do a lot. <laughs> I also, I'll just give you props that you, over the course of the years that you've been here, your gymnastics has improved exponentially, and they look pretty solid there. So thanks, Max. Well done. What do you, from a technical standpoint, is there anything that you're working on right now that you're trying to tighten up or change or do so, you feel pretty smooth with these? Once I get tired, I start catching a lot lower. I don't think I actually press down on the bar really at all when I turn over. Yeah. So, um, and I also get really winded catching on my stomach. So I think working on pressing down and catching higher yeah. will eventually help me more. Cause this movement, it like systematically blows me up so bad. It's not my arms, it's not anything in particular. I just get off and I'm like, Redlined. That's how I feel from all crossfit. <laughs> <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> you're, it looks like you're coming up high enough and your contact point is on your belly. It looks like you're just continuing right. to move forward as opposed to being able to stay vertical and press up to finish out with straight arms, which is generally how the 
best muscle uppers in the sport end up right. handling those. And something Brandy and I talked about after this was this is probably a really good way for the two of us to train bar muscle ups because we were resting much less than we would have if we would just like tackle a set. And I yeah. think that also made it hurt yeah. really bad. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, I was kind of panicking. <laughs> Team workouts, I feel like, are actually potentially better interval workouts in CrossFit than actual interval workouts. As long as you're working out with someone that's similar to you in uh, capacity. Yeah. Because and otherwise desire. You, yeah, yeah. <laughs> otherwise you can get crushed. Yeah, yeah I agree. I, Mia, you said it. You would have rested a little bit longer on some of those muscle-ups. Mm -hmm. I think the accountability part is like just as powerful as anything else because it kind of forces you to try, take some risks, and see if you can do something. For sure. For this squat snatch portion, would you change this potentially or? Change to what, like less reps? Or, or singles, no. or do you think you have to at this um, weight do touch uh, and go? Singles for me blow up my back. I would rather touch and go than set up for singles at this weight. Um, it wasn't, no, I think it was fine. I would probably would have done the same thing. I think in the first round, what I would have changed would have been not opening with a big set of bar muscle ups. Yeah. I think that that was, that just like pushed me over the edge way too soon in the workout. But maybe that's what we needed to do because we didn't fall off a huge amount. It just hurt really bad. <laughs> yeah, it seems like when we go through all your splits that you maintained your pace on pretty much every movement except for the row. The row pace kind of fell off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that makes sense. If you open up with a cyclical movement when you're fresh, Generally, you're going to push a faster. It's so much easier to go fast. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And but the a big separator if you can maintain it. For sure. Yeah. I think the the hardest part, and Mia, you mentioned this before we we actually got on camera, was whoever's going from the squat snatches to the row only has a few seconds, and then they have to do however many cows you were doing. That's definitely the probably the hardest part to maintain a high pace from the first round to the second round. Yes. So the first person on the rower was way lower than when we were um, in the first round. But then when I got on. I had a, like 30 to 45 seconds of recovery time, so I was able to push. And then when Brandy got back on, she was able to push as well. So it really was just those first. I think she does. It's 15. just this cows right yeah, here. Yeah, I think yeah. she has 15 here, and then. Well, she literally had eight seconds or nine seconds before yeah. she had to go. So yeah. that's. I mean, that's a short transition. One of the things I'll mention that we did, I thought that worked really well. So when I say we, me and Kyle. Kai, I'm a little bit better at squat snatching, so I said, hey, I'm going to finish the last six. And I did six touch and go to give him a longer break before mm -hmm. he did. So basically, I waited until he got on the rower, I did my six touch and go, and then he could start, so he was able to keep a pretty fast output. Mm -hmm. Well, la dee da. <laughs> yeah. They did a scaled work. Yeah. Yeah, we, I like how we Brandon did. says that he's just a little better at class <laughs> snatching. <laughs> You're very kind. I think also, for specifically Brandy and I, the bar muscle ups really blew us up going into the squat snatches, so it was like management there. I don't think either of us could have really dug and took in a, taken a bigger set on the yeah. Squat snatches. Did you get any grip limitation from those? No. No? Yeah, it was enough mm -mm. break. Yeah. <clears throat> so Brandy got on at 9.39. That's when they finished their first round of work. And then she got off at 10.40. So it essentially means the person, you, got a minute of rest, which mm -hmm. is just a way different structure than that first person that gets on the rower. Might be something to consider. Maybe Brandy should have got on, rode easy for 15 seconds, and then rode hard for another 15 or 20, and then let me get on. I'm not sure what the best way to try to navigate that, to cut that. Should, they went from 203 in their first split to 241 in their second split. So some of that time would probably be taken by another team that you know had the ability to keep the row pace output after barbell cycling. Yeah, Max, you already mentioned this, but that was really the only place that they dropped off. So, I mean, you guys lost 38 seconds on the row from round one to round two. Everything else was within like seven or eight seconds. So I, I do think that it, you know, for those that are trying to compete with Brandy and Mia, that would be the place that you can make up the most time. Yeah, maybe a little bit in the bar muscle ups too. Yeah. That's uh, like 20 seconds there, yeah. slower. But that's that's yeah. a hard movement because we, I don't think you can. For us, we couldn't really strategize to right. You change that. Feel. But the row, we definitely could have figured yeah. something out. There's just bigger limitations for yeah. gymnastics. If you can't do it, you can't do it. Whereas rowing. Generally, you can pull harder. <laughs> so, Mia, do you remember what your cow splits were on this one? So, how how many did me or excuse me, Brandy do in that minute that she was on the row? I think she opened with fifteen. Okay. And then I don't remember what we did after that. So, if she opened with fifteen in a minute, is she holding like a thousand there? Uh, I think it was more in like the nine hundred. So okay. Nine hundred will give you about fifteen a minute. Okay. And then you got back on, and you were at fourteen hundred. No, oh, I think okay. I was like eleven, maybe touching twelve, but we didn't get back up to that original okay, pace. Got it. 
Yeah, so based on the data we have, like 19 one's a good example since I know it's an individual workout, but the, probably the fastest females were that 1150 to 1250 range, which in that workout is, is really aggressive. Males were 1450 to 1550, but again, yeah. they, you know, the males were finishing 10 plus rounds, which is And you're talking about lot. maintaining that. Maintaining was it that. 20? 15 minutes. 15 yeah. minutes, yeah. I mean, that's a, you're maintaining it while going back and forth just between wall balls. So that's pretty impressive if you're yeah. able to do that. Thank goodness for the wall balls. <laughs> I agree with you. I, well, m my squatting endurance isn't great right now, but that definitely was the easiest of yeah, all the movements. Sure. I thought the squat snatch was by far the hardest. The squat snatch was the hardest. It was just going from we, our bar muscle ups. That's the only way that we actually, um, you know, we did beat them. By the way, in this workout, <laughs> that's the only way. How many did. times can we get that out? Before <laughs> I was waiting until at least halfway through, which we're there now. So you know, yeah, we beat the girls. No big deal. Perfect. <laughs> what was the point that you were making before? <laughs> you just, <laughs> nothing productive to add. The point is, we're better at muscle ups. Our bar muscle ups, I think because we did bigger sets, we were done with those in like a minute each round. And so when we got to the squat snatch, I was already breathing pretty heavy. Just the bar muscle ups weren't very efficient for <laughs> me and Kyle. And then we, I was doing bigger sets in the squat snatches to give Kyle a little bit of a break so he could go hard on the row, and that blew me up. Uh, her bounding is really fast. It's yeah, actually super sure. impressive. Yeah, we went to the field and did a track or a change of direction work, and Brandy. I think she beat me on the mm. zigzag sprint. Brandy is you very did. athletic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, there's just such a difference too when you can land and bound without having to create a bunch of tension either where you're holding your breath or it just like spikes your heart rate. For me, if I bound 10 reps in, I'm already like redlined. Yeah, I think it's an important thing to to train and figure out how to get your, I mean, because it really does come up with box jumps and double unders, yes. or double unders being the bigger one that comes up in every open. And I think just having appropriate bounding mechanics really helps with that. This is a different type of bounding, but your feet do generally get pretty close together on the rebound. And just having that elasticity is super, super helpful yeah. when you're talking about repeating jumping. I get really blown up dropping my hips that low. Like it's extra work to get as low as she's getting mm. on the box. So. I find, so I do both of these, and it just really depends on how tired I am. The lower hip one that Brandy does, I cycle quicker and it blows my legs up. The strategy that you use where your hips are higher blows my heart rate up. So I think a lot of times it's just dependent on how wrecked I am and what the movement pairing is. Because if it's something like a C2 bike or wall balls or thrusters, doing what Brandy did is just like intolerable on my legs. Yeah. I would love to see the difference in force off the ground though. Like yeah. having a jump higher because yeah. you know if your hips are higher, your feet are coming higher versus the way Brandy's jumping. Yeah. So we're doing fours here and we just settled into that right away. Yeah, I mean great transitions and you know I don't think like is there a big difference from going if you went fives versus fours versus threes? As long as those transitions are pretty tight. You guys, the split time was 123 in the first round, it was 129 in this one. So that's super I mean, yeah, yeah, there's super good sustainability. Did you have uh, any communication going on during this workout? A little bit, but um, I think like most of it we just kind of understood and Brandy and I both do a good job of, like in between sets we're like bent over and tired, but <laughs> I'm counting and I know when she's gonna put it down and when I need to be ready and she does the same thing. She has a lot of team experience, so um, I think a lot of it was just like unsaid but understood. Yeah. Um, there were a few times on bar muscle ups where I was like at the top and I'd say like I have to come down early or you know, something like that. Brandy got mad at me or commented when we were on our team series, uh, when we did our little internal team series and we were partners and she said I did all my workouts without saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk while I'm breathing. <laughs> I'm at my limits. <laughs> Don't make me. Yeah. One extra breath and I'm gone. I'm dead. <laughs> Yeah, I do think, you know, you have some experience with team, and which both of you do, Mia, that it helps. It's almost like the unsaid. You can look at each other and you know it's your turn or whatever it may be. She does a really good job close to the end of this set. Um, we're doing threes now, but then we go to twos, and then she does the math in her head and sees that there's five left, and she takes three so that I only have to do two at the end. That kind of stuff um, just, I think, comes from experience also because yeah. we didn't say anything about it. She just did it. When you guys are talking on this, were you calling out just the reps you did or were you tallying well, all the no, reps? No, well, Ryan was counting, oh, so okay. 
there was that, and he yeah. definitely was helping us too, especially when at the beginning we were like, uh, when you our math is wrong. <laughs> Well, I always wonder that because it's very easy, even if you are, you know, an accountant and smart, <laughs> to make a mistake as Brandy did. Yeah. Especially if you're tired. Like, what happens if you're going? I did two, you did three, and then you yeah. mess it up at the end. So right. yeah. having like a running tally, running yeah. tally, makes they, sense. They do cognitive tests on people when they're tired, and like they'll do rowing, and then have you do basic arithmetic. And people's ability to be accurate is way worse. Can we you, make a video of that? Uh, like, yeah, let's do assault bike sprints, and then have to do yeah. some. But the, I would be, I would sandbag. I get all the sprints. <laughs> Look how smart I am. Wow, he's a genius. <laughs> yeah, he can do all his arithmetic, but his sprints 200 watts. <laughs> so this is where we thought we would be at the end of the workout. We are only 18 minutes in. So basically, you are ex excellent strategery people. <laughs> yeah, we crushed it. <laughs> that is such an advantage to be able to do like an open workout multiple times. So you know, okay, we screwed up our pacing on this one. We can come yeah. back to it. If you can only do it once, like at yeah. the games, that's a sure. totally different ball game. I mean, it is a massive skill of the best yes. of the best that they are able to see a workout, come up with some sort of a game plan and understanding of how they're gonna attack it and do it on the first time. Yeah. And then, like Noah, if he repeats his open workouts, oftentimes is only within you know a couple seconds of yeah. where he does. It's a pretty important skill to have. It's just a really hard, it's a very few people that have that yeah, ability. Absolutely. You gotta do a lot of CrossFit to have that much context. So, so you guys went doubles on this set? Yeah. Or round? Yep. Yeah. We were hurting. But still, I mean, the difference was 11 seconds. So 144 yeah. for the first, 155 for this. So maybe a little bit in adding, what, three or four extra transitions, but mm -hmm. that was it. Yeah, I mean, that just shows you, though, that you could have a different a different strategy and still get through it in a quick amount of time. You could yeah. do it in less reps or less reps per set. Yeah. I think the big thing too is if you're going to do doubles or some teams will do singles, you have to practice the way you're gonna transition. You can't let the bar bounce around. Like that mm -hmm. one kind of slid over and maybe mm -hmm. that yeah. wastes a second. I know it's not a big deal when you're just practicing, but like if you're, if let's say there was a team open, which I really hope that they come out with something like that. Please. Those <laughs> things matter so much. God, a team open. It'd yeah, be Brandy does yeah, a good job of like get... punching. She's not doing it now, but at the beginning, um, or all the barbell movements before this, she like brings the bar down and like punches it into the ground so that I don't have to chase yeah, it. Yeah, it settles. Yeah, I mean, if there is a team open, Kyle and I will be on a team and uh, dominate these girls again. It's not gonna be <laughs> teams of two. <laughs> if it is teams of two and you're with Kyle Lube, I'm gonna take Mike on my team and we're gonna beat you. <laughs> no, no chance. <laughs> we will win yeah. any strength workout. <laughs> we're, we're, we'll just forfeit those. <laughs> all right, so last couple here. So did you guys decide that you were gonna start on this row or did it just no, the No, it just happened okay. that way. And even though I didn't want to, I was glad that it ended up on me because she did it last time. Yeah. So what so. was your pace here, about the same? Ooh, low nine. <laughs> 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 Touched the high eights a few can times. You, can you make that noise again? <laughs> um, and I only stayed on for 10 calories. Ah, uh, so Brandy was tougher. Did you feel like you didn't have any power or you were trying to conserve a little bit because you knew there was still five minutes left in the I, workout? Well, I didn't feel like I had any power, <laughs> but then my next row, Ryan said, this is your last row, give us some power, and I was like, well, Ryan said. Yeah. So, and then knowing that we were going into wall balls helps. I wish uh, Ryan's words had that much power over me, too. Yeah. <laughs> this is your faster. last row, go faster. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah. I'm good, I am. No, I can't let Ryan down. So the other thing to think about, too, is these transitions I mean, that one was substantially slower than the first round. That is an area when you're tired that you could make up on is just getting into it and getting started quickly because it doesn't really take that much energy to do that, whereas yeah. rowing faster is a harder process <laughs> when you're tired. It really depends on what the standard is. Like, if you're not allowed to pull until you have your feet strapped in and on the seat, if you're transitioning, it's different. But if, let's say, any way that you can get the cows done. As your partner's getting off, what I like to do is grab the handle, I put one foot in, and I'm already pulling yeah. while I'm putting the second foot in, just so that I can ramp up the cow per hour as fast as I can. All right, we're back in. What was your pace? Was this the when he told you this is yeah, your last one? Yeah, I think one? I was in like the 11. Okay. 
So your peak pace when you're refresh in the first round was like 1,400, 1,500, mm -hmm. and then 1,100 when you're Not 1,500, 1,400. <laughs> not, not there. <laughs> there was no 1,500. But, you know, again, to give everyone the splits, this was one second off from your second round. So it was 242 versus 241. Your first round, again, though, was 203. So that's mm -hmm. where the big difference was. Yeah, so yeah. this is basically like the sustainable power that they could hold, whereas yeah. that first one is the power when you're fresh, yeah. which yeah. is just way different. And I think you have to do that in this workout. Like, you can't pace that first row like whatever you're going to hit in the next few rounds. Yeah, yeah. It'll catch up to you regardless. Yeah. I think it's worth getting out ahead. Do you think you would have been better off slowing it down a tiny bit to like a two, no? No, I don't think the row was what blew me up. I think it was the bar muscle ups yeah. and the squat snatches. The, the amount of power for clean and jerks, bar muscle ups, squat snatch is just so much higher than row, wall ball, box jump overs yeah. in my opinion. Especially for the row since you get a long rest when, you're yeah. other, when your partner's on there. I didn't think the clean and jerks were bad. I think because you're coming into them from three less taxing movements, or at least less taxing for us, but then bar muscle ups crush me, and then the squat snatch was very painful. Yeah. Were you guys calling out on the wall balls how many reps you're going to do, or was that more uh, you knew? Ryan was. Okay. Get yourself a judge like get, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> get yourself a Ryan. Yeah. I just was wondering, how However, did Brandy know when to step right, in? Right. I would always say one more. Okay. Cool. And so would she. Yeah. So uh, out on the floor, I'm not a, the biggest fan of someone bending over with hands on knees, but I actually do think that's probably a better recovery strategy. So it feels people are gonna, so much better. Yeah. No, on I mean my I, arms. I think it's proven that you can probably breathe better yeah. And, yeah. and be able to relax a little bit. So I've yeah. seen two different schools of thought. I've seen the one that talks about the physiology of recovery, that bending over helps with cardiac recovery. And then another school of thought that says staying tall, looking up, improving posture is part of peak performance. So bending over like that. Well, is, that would be more psychological, correct? Yeah, so yeah. like, but if the you, psychology if you are, maybe leads to physiology yeah. in some capacity. I find it. It pop. And obviously, this is nothing yeah. based in science. <laughs> but well, is psychology really ever based in science? I guess there's so many different schools of thought. My thing is, is if you believe in yourself and you're bent over and you know that that's going to allow you to recover faster, then you believe better. Hmm. So. That's always been my thing. I'm gonna recover like this and know I'm still gonna beat somebody, but like there's a right. certain type of athlete that's like that. Also, yeah. in a workout like this or a team workout, for me, I know that I need to be ready when she does her 10th wall ball. So like I'm counting, I'm paying attention. I'm not sitting there like, oh, yeah. like woe is me. <laughs> it's just, I'll stand up when it's time to stand yeah. up. And personally, I don't see an issue with that. See, that's the thing too, is if you're bent over and you are doing the whole woe is me right, thing, that's, that's, that's when yeah. you're failing on both sides. But if right. you're doing it and saying, I'm trying to maximize my recovery so that I can crush this next set and that's the way that you're framing it, probably a better option. Hmm. I gotta consider whether or not I will is me. This one. Yeah, I think I will. I might will is me. I'm not sure. I mean, Brandy does it too. Like she's bent over, but she stands up before it's her time to go. Like she's aware. She knows what's going on. We're coming out up to the final push right now. We held eights on this throughout, um, except for there was always one person that finished with four. But that felt fine. Yeah, this, I mean, this movement, you're basically doing at the same speed as you were doing before. Yeah. It's not really mm -hmm. like a sprint finish, but you can tell that there's some sort of sense of urgency and clock awareness. You can see them both looking at the clock because they realize time's almost done. Yeah. Did you there get yourself that last one? Uh, Ryan sure mm. did. It was at zero. Mm. You Very have to hit the ground. <laughs> so we beat you by seven reps. <laughs> you scaled the workout. <laughs> you guys did a great scaled version. Very yeah. well done. Good job, Project Mia. Pat. Good job, Brandy. Do your thing, man. It's a wrap. You know what I'm saying? Your boy Project Patar in this thing, man. Hey, look, man. Thank y'all for watching Train Think Tank YouTube channel. Y'all hit that motherfucking subscribe button. You know what I'm saying? So y'all go ahead, man. Thank y'all for watching the channel, you know what I'm saying? Hit that motherfucking subscribe button, let it be known, let it be known, let it be known, you know what I'm saying? Hot talk!